This Sunday, in a special way, is known as the Word of God Sunday. Now, every Sunday is the Word of God Sunday, right? But the emphasis of giving this Sunday this title is because our lives are contained in the Word of God. And if you're ignorant of the Word of God, then you don't know the purpose and meaning of your life. You don't know who you belong to. You'll never be fulfilled. But God loves us so much that the Word of God, who is the second person of the Trinity, the second person of the Trinity, there's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Son is the Word of God, the eternal Word of God. In the fullness of time, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, Jesus Christ. He is the Word of God. God knew that we as humans needed to have the presence of the Word of God for many reasons. Because if he just spoke his word from heaven to us, which he did in the Old Testament, and that was all an act of love and wisdom and, and guidance and fatherly care, but still, human beings need to have love made visible, to have truth made visible, to have the word made visible, and that's who Jesus is. You see, when you love someone, and God is love, when you love somebody, you come close to them, and you reveal everything about yourself to them, and you come to a union with them in love. Isn't that beautiful? That God came close to us, that he reveals to us the word of God not just in words, but in his very person, in his actions, including the things he did not do. We should learn from what Jesus did and what Jesus didn't do. We learn from his teachings, and we put them into practice. And we learn, above all, the lessons he teaches us through his example, for example, being born a little baby of the Blessed Virgin Mary, that teaches us, first of all, to be humble and little and to love the Blessed Virgin Mary. There's a lot of lessons right there, right? More lessons than that. Obedience, trust, joy, all the things we celebrated at Christmas. But then eventually going to the cross. So many lessons. That there's a meaning to suffering. And that when we die to this world, we rise to a new life. The life that Jesus came to win for us and to make possible. But Jesus also gave us the Holy Spirit so we can receive the Word of God that's inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Word of God is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And the Word of God is infallible and inerrant. Those are big words, which basically means the Word of God cannot fail, and the Word of God has no error. Because this is the Word of God. The Word of God. This is God speaking to us. Do we really appreciate the fact that God speaks to us? And not just in words, verbally, he does that, but in the person of Jesus Christ, making that word visible. Do you love the word of God? Do you spend time with the word of God? Do you let the word of God direct your life? After each reading, you hear the lector say, the word of the Lord, and we say, thanks be to God. Do we mean it? 
The Word of God is something that should penetrate your hearts. And transform your mind. And help you realize that you're created for greatness. Each of you is unique, precious, and unrepeatable. You're called to be children of God and act like children of God. To put the Word of God into practice. But above all, to love the Word of God. But you can't love what you don't know. That's why we're created to know, love, and serve God and be happy with Him forever. There's an order there because you can't love what you don't know. Now, once you love, you start to know more. You go deeper, and the relationship deepens, you understand? Everybody's on a journey. You start at a basic level of knowing the Word of God, and then you can't help but love the Word of God. Jesus speaks about love, and he makes love visible. How can you not love love? Don't you want to live in the truth that sets you free? That's the word of God. (laughs) But you have to make a choice, brothers and sisters. Are you going to let your life be directed by the word of God, the word of God who created us and has a plan for our life? Are you going to let your life be directed by the word of God? Or... Are you going to be, let your life be directed by the word of men that changes every single day, it seems like now? If you're watching mainstream media all the time, I mean, it's just, I'll just put it this way, it's not good news. <laughs> what God speaks is good news. Now, yeah, it has challenges. Go to the mysteries of the rosary. The rosary are, when you, when you pray the holy rosary, you're praying the word of God. All the mysteries, the joys, the lights, the sorrows, and the glories of Jesus and Mary and Joseph. And, and, and you're contemplating the face of Christ in the school of Mary. You're contemplating the word of God. And you're learning from the first joyful mystery, the Annunciation, how to say yes to God's plan, whatever he asks of you. And then by the power of the Holy Spirit, that word of God enlightens you, takes you out of darkness, and sets you on your way. But then you learn that you need to go to the visitation and bring the word of God to other people. When I say the word, the word is interchangeable with Jesus. In fact, we hear in the word of God, St. John's Gospel, the very first verse, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The second person of the Trinity from all eternity. But in the fullness of time, St. John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 14, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus came into the womb of Mary and was born for us at Christmas. To make love visible, to make truth visible. You never separate truth from love, love from truth, okay? But this is the light for our life. And when I say the word of God, certainly we're trying to emphasize this Sunday that people should love sacred scripture. That's what Catholics call the word of God, sacred scripture. But we also have sacred tradition. Not everything that Jesus said and taught was written in the scriptures. Read St. John's Gospel near the conclusion. The whole world couldn't hold enough of the books that were written if if we wrote everything Jesus did and said. That's what St. John says, the beloved disciple. But the tradition, what Jesus taught by his actions by his life. You know, when the apostles first went out after the resurrection of the Lord and and receiving the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, and remember they were in the upper room with Mary praying for the Holy Spirit, they went out to the whole world proclaiming the good news. 
Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again, the basic message. They didn't go around with, with Bibles handing them out initially. Eventually, they started to write them down, thank the Lord. And so we have 73 books of sacred scripture. You, hear, you keep hearing me say sacred scripture, sacred writings. This is different than any other book. When you open up the sacred scripture, what, what many people call the Bible, and, and I don't have a problem with people calling it the Bible, because Bible stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. Basic. But you need the tradition of the church to really understand the fullness, to go deeper. You need to pray the rosary to start to make it a part of your life and transform you. But you also need the sacraments of the church. First, you need to be baptized to really receive the gift of the Word of God starting to dwell in you at baptism, right? Where you become a child of the Father. That's the Word of God. You're baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to become a child of the Father. To become a disciple of Jesus. Disciple means learner. In the, in the responsorial psalm, we all said, teach us your ways, O Lord. Do we mean it when we say that at Mass, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass? Do we really pay attention to those responsorial psalms and what we're hearing and what we're reading? Is it coming in our heart or are we just going through motions? Do you review the Word of God before you come to the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass? Afterwards, you discuss the Word of God and let it become a part of your life, and then go share the Word of God. You understand? But thank God we have the sacred scriptures, and, and when you pray the scriptures, when, when I'm praying, I don't open up the scriptures like any other book. I open up even reverently. This is God's Word. This is God's Word. This is God speaking to me, right? God's Word. This is sacred. And when you turn the pages, it, it, it helps to do it so reverently. Even turn the pages like this, thanking God for what he revealed to you. I remember when I studied in Rome as a seminarian, we had this priest come in for a certain class once a week. And after he'd have his notes with him all about the Word of God and, and, and the teachings of the church so that we can understand the Word of God. And after each time he'd finish a, a page of teaching, he would go like this. I learned more from him by the way that he was so reverent with, with, with the way of, of, of teaching the Word of God. I learned more in that class from that, witness. But do we approach the Word of God like, like just as any other book? And remember, the Word of God is not just a book. Do you know that the Muslims, in the Koran, and it's not a book that we follow, but they call us the people of the book. Well, Pope Benedict XVI pointed out, we're not the people of the book, we're the people of the divine person, Jesus Christ, who is the Word of God. Did you just hear what I just shared with you? That's a life changer. But you still need to go to the sacred scripture or the Bible, you can call it that, okay, and let it speak to your heart. But in Sundays, when you come to Mass, you're hearing the Word of God proclaimed, not just read, proclaimed, and it should be coming into your heart and transforming your heart. Very first reading, we started off today, the Word of the Lord came to Jonah. Did you pick up on that? Wow. The Word of the Lord comes to you and sends you on a mission. We have the Legion of Mary here. You're sent on a mission to carry the Word of God to other people, and the way you do it, you do it in a special way. You have a devotion to Mary because if you get people in a relationship with Mary, she carries the Word of God in her womb for nine months after the Annunciation. In the visitation, she's bringing the Word of God made flesh in her womb, and John the Baptist leaps in the womb in the presence of the Word of God. 
The Word of God is born in flesh, love made visible at Christmas. I mean, you can go through all the mysteries of the rosary. And that's what the Legion of Mary does. The Legion of Mary helps people come into a relationship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit because the Word is the Word of the Father, but He's the second person of the Trinity. And the love between the Father and the Son is the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, who inspires this Word and helps us understand the Word. So we rejoice that the Father speaks to us and Mary will help us understand the importance of receiving that word. In fact, St. Augustine says that before Mary conceived in her womb, she conceived in her heart. She loved the word of God so much she had the word of God in her heart and then when the plan of God was announced to her, when the plan of God was announced to her, she said, yes, fiat, which means let it be accord done to me according to your word. Can we say that, let it be done to me according to your word? Well, you need to know the word to say, let it be done to me according to your word. How can you say, be it done unto me according to your word, if you don't know the word? So we're emphasizing, go into the word. Now, <laughs> I, I, I'd love to go on for an hour, two hours, three hours, I just want to inspire you. The Holy Spirit's the one who inspires you. But to love the Word of God. As a matter of fact, I hope in all your homes you have the sacred scripture, a Bible, right in your home as soon as people walk in your door and they see where you center your life. But remember, you, you, to live the Word of God, you need the, you need the sacraments. You need to be baptized so you can live in the Word of God who is Jesus. You can live... As, as the Word of God, as a child of the Father, you can live in the power of the Holy Spirit, but then you need to be confirmed and nourished in the Eucharist. There's the Word of God made flesh, so you can live the Word of God, because there's challenging teachings. For example, in one breath, Jesus says, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who persecute you. And before that, he says, bless those who curse you. Wow, those four things I can't do on my own. Love my enemy? I mean, they're my enemy, right? I mean, that's why they're called my enemy. <laughs> on a human level, can I love my enemy? No. But the word of God says, love your enemies. And with God, all things are possible. And he gives you the Eucharist so you can live that word of God, okay? So let's just even look at what happened this last week. Last Sunday, the Word of God looked at you. It looked at your heart and said, what are you looking for? You were supposed to examine what are the longest, what are, what's the deepest longings of your heart? Friendship with God, holiness, eternal life deep down. As you heard in the second reading in the Word of God today, St. Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, speaking to the Corinthians, the world as we know it is passing away. If you're living for this, that, that, that word is important to realize, to wake us up. If we're living for this world, guess what? You're living for something that's passing away. You'll never be fulfilled, amen? You get it? I want to live according to this word. Now, it's beyond me, but everything's possible for God. I imitate Mary. I become like Jesus. I, I live for the triune God. Imitate Mary, become like Jesus, live for the triune God. It's God's design for my life. God's design for your, your life. So he said, what are you looking for? Come and see. This week, he says, the time of fulfillment, this is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel. Let's change our way of thinking and start to live according to the word of God. And you'll be blessed. But then he goes on and he concludes, follow me. Just like he called St. Peter and St. Andrew and St. James and St. John, he's calling you today, follow me. But how can you follow if you're not listening to the word with your heart and following the instructions? Don't we need a map? If we're looking for a destination, don't you need a map? Well, here's your map with the sacred tradition of the church and the catechism of the church 
to understand the deep meaning of the word. Well, my goal was to inspire you to love the word. And the word is a person, Jesus Christ. You can't love what you don't know. Every day, pray the word of God. Let it speak to your heart and let it transform your lives and then, then go share the word of God with the world. And then you'll be bringing blessings to everyone. So just be like the Blessed Virgin Mary. Love the word, live the word, share the word. Listen to the word, ponder the word, treasure the word, and give freely what you've received freely. Be Catholic and become saints. God bless you all. Amen.